Nosferatu is a German 1922 film. This particular film was actually supposed to be lost to us forever, but by chance, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Yeah, there were a few copies that survived. <laughs> now, the reason that I say that it was supposed to be lost to us is because I'm sure that we all know by now that this story, the story of Nosferatu is just Dracula. Um, F.W. Murnau, and I'm sorry if I'm not saying his name correctly, this story that he did is just Dracula. Count Orlock is Dracula. <laughs> there are a few changes, but for the most part, it's... And at the time, the widow of Bram Stoker filed a lawsuit. And that was the end of that. Yeah. Um, Prana film... These the studio Prana film, it 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 went under. <laughs> that that was the end of that. And um, I think, if I remember correctly, this was the first and last film that Prana film did. I will check on that. And uh, but anyway, now F W. Murnau, this film actually boosted his career. He was already doing other films at the same time he was doing this one. This film actually got a really good reception. People actually liked it at the time. It was just that lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the book was successful as it was. And, uh, but it was an unofficial release of Dracula. So, um, yeah, of course you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> now, it, this, of course, stars Max Schreck as Count Orlock. And, um, and there's also a uh, Greta Schroeder who plays uh, the wife. And, um, I'm not very good with German names. There's also, she, she plays the wife of an estate agent who is suspect of Count Orlock. And the estate agent is played by a Gustav von uh, Wagenheim. And I'm, again, sorry if I butcher these names. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Now, this film, of course, is a horror film. It was actually banned in Sweden uh, from what I was reading until the 70s and of course that was around the time when the remake <laughs> was made and um, yeah there is a remake and uh, which oh who, who was it that that made the remake I I can't remember um But anyway, um, I'll, of course, put that in the description box because I know because I was thinking Salem's Lot and that's Stephen King. But anyway, um, yeah. So this, of course, has a lot of expressionism. That's one thing that German silent films are known for and famous for. Of course, you think of uh, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Metropolis. And so, yeah, a lot of expressionism in, in German films. This one is no different. <laughs> and um, so now one thing that I do want to point out, because this is something that a lot of people because I see it in a lot of uh, YouTube channels when they follow this, you know, fans of the movie and they try to find exactly where the movie was filmed and everything. It was filmed on location, but there are fans who try to say that the movie was at an actual place in Germany. It, it's a fictional German town 
called uh, uh, Weisborg, I think is how you pronounce it. Again, I'm, I'm very sorry. My German is rusty. I took German in high school, but. <laughs> and um, so, yes, you can reprimand me. All my, my German viewers, you can reprimand me to high heaven. I'm very sorry for butchering your language. <laughs> but yes, it is a fictional town. And uh, but I highly recommend you you try to find these channels. There there are dozens of channels. I'm not going to try and put any of them in the description box, but there are dozens of channels where they actually go to Germany and show like the scene where uh, Nosferatu is looking out the window. It shows that particular. Aspect. It's still there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he looks out the window and and menacingly goes out <laughs> and everything. And um, it's I, I love watching those kinds of channels, and especially for a movie like this, like I you know that's still with us today. This should have been lost, <laughs> and and. Uh, I, I just I love watching those, especially when when you hold up the the pictures. Those are really cool. You you hold up the pictures and how it yeah changes around and everything. So now the like I said, there are deviations from the novel, but not enough that it was different for <laughs> for the courts to say sorry. Mrs. Stoker, but <laughs> you got nothing here. <laughs> and um, and this uh, um, now there's I didn't really talk about the the reception that it got. I did say that it was uh, well received, but I didn't really talk about the reception that it got. Um, so. Some people said that it didn't fit the horror theme. Uh, that his look, that the look for Count Orlock didn't really fit the horror theme. You know, yeah, he's got claw-like hands and a and and the head and everything. That just didn't seem to fit. So there there were a little bit of a mixed reception, but the, the movie did just fine. And and another. Uh, critics said that he was too brightly lit. Well, I can understand why he was too brightly lit. He was supposed to be the center of attention. <laughs> he, he was the main point of the story. I think if they had made him too dark, uh, we'd lose the whole point. And um, now, Another thing that I want to point out is that this was the first film to show a vampire actually dying to from exposure to light. And uh, so that's, um, I thought that was interesting. For some reason, I thought that there was another one that did that, uh, like, um, like Georges Malaise did that. But no, this was the first one to do that. And um, and of course, Roger Ebert put him put this film on his uh, 100 films to watch before you, you die. You know, he had a list. There were lists going on in the 90, 80s and 90s, and this was one of them. So yeah, it there is the remake. Uh, Werner Herzog made it. And in 1979, uh, there's Salem's Lot that was heavily inspired by Nosferatu. This film is in pop culture in so many different ways. I'm sure a lot of us were introduced because of that SpongeBob episode. <laughs> and um, or if any of you know, in the song Under Pressure, if you've seen the music video, there's a clip. They have so many different clips going in that music video, and Nosferatu shows up 
in that music video. But I mean, the, the list just continues to go on as to how, how much this movie has inspired pop culture over the years, especially in the 70s. I mean, from the 70s going on up to present day. And um, so, again, for a movie that was supposed to be lost to time, and we still have it. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's inspired so many different horror films. We have a remake. We have, uh, of course, uh, Salem's Lot and, and all of that. So, but anyway, uh, this is Nosferatu. It was released in 1922. A hundred years later, we are still enjoying this film. And um, I'm sure a hundred years later, we will still be enjoying it. 